All right, you guys, so we're back. We took a few weeks off, sorry. And there's specific ones of you that have been asking, can we get some consistency around here? And if, it, if it's anything like my gym game, I mean, shoot, I need to be on this a little bit more often, right? So, uh, super excited to be back here tonight. Um, obviously, Johnny, once again, adjusting the camera. And came up with this topic tonight because I've been getting hit with this, and this is such a common theme that you hear when it comes to relationships, specifically new ones. And the topic tonight is how to get over your past hurts in order to usher in new relationships. So, or even how to get over your past hurts to make sure the ones that you have that you wanna keep can currently flourish. And so before I really dive into some of the things that I found super helpful for Johnny and I when we first started dating in order for me to get over past hurts, I wanted to open up to you, babe. Anything you wanna jump in here? Right off the in bat, to past because hurts. once I get in, I'm going to start flowing. Um, <laughs> in regards yeah, to like, I mean, is there anything that comes up for you before I really dive in that you want to, you want to? No, I want to let you, uh, I mean, like, like what? Like you said, like in regards to past hurts, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, not yet. I'm going to let you kind of flow. In all there. right, all right. We gave him a chance, ladies and gentlemen. If he <laughs> wants to wait and take a back seat, it is okay because. Ready. Okay, so. How to get over your past hurts. So there's a lot of people out there that are wanting, you know, good relationships. Now, romantic relationships, you know, significant others, you got friendships, you got business partnerships, but tonight we're just gonna focus on romantic relationships because at the end of the day, this all came from a question that I was asked this week is, you know, what do relationships mean to you? Now I can't remember the exact question. Like how important are relationships to you? You know, how do you view relationships? Mm. That was the premise of it. And when I sat there, I'm just like, relationships are everything absolutely everything if you have bad relationships that's gonna show mm -hmm. if you have good relationships that's gonna show if you don't really have any at all that's gonna show because what you do behind closed doors is always gonna show out front what you do behind the scenes what you do in the dark always shows in the light whatever metaphor you want to use and it's just so important because now more than ever like this season of like COVID is either tearing people apart or bringing people together. And I believe it's doing a little bit of both tearing apart where our governor once again, wants to have curfews. He wants to have another lockdown. He wants to prohibit people getting together for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like it is wild to me. Okay. Like people, here's my PSA on that. Live your life <laughs> there. Anyways, mm, live your life. That's all I'm going to say. And so when it comes to relationships, like, Talking about romantic ones, once again, finding that significant other. We all come with baggage. We all come with hurt. And there's people in our life that have definitely damaged us, that have hurt us. But once they hurt us, after that, it's up to us to be able to draw that line in the sand. And is this going to affect me from here on out? And I want to give an example, and then I would love you for you to give an example. Because before I met Johnny, I've been in several different relationships. I actually used to have a video up on YouTube. It might actually even still be up there. I used to call myself a relationship hopper. I did not want to be single. <laughs> Didn't want to be single. Why? Obvious reasons. Most of us don't want to be single for the simple fact of it's painful. You know, like you want to be with somebody else. You want to enjoy that warm body. You want to enjoy that conversation. Yes. You want basically call it like, I'm going to call it like I see it. You want somebody else to fix you because you don't want to fix you and take the time to fix you. That's why I was hopping. I was like, you know what? I don't want to really get to know Molly. I'm just going to jump until I can find one that I can give my everything to and not have to focus on me, yeah. which is so not even, that's the wrong thing to do. Let me tell you this. That's a fact. So one of the most painful things that I went through, and I've already, I've explained this before, is I had an almost ex-fiance. So he had the ring, asked my parents for permission to marry me, and it wasn't the act of him cheating that I found out. It wasn't that. It was it was the fact of, it was the fact of, actually, no, that wasn't the most painful one. I'll give you one from college. This goes back a little bit deeper. I was dating this guy for four, over four years. And um, in this relationship, we went through some ups and downs. We went through some ups and downs. And then when he was deciding what he wanted to do with it, basically he strung me along for months brought me to a Christmas party that he was having just to throw in my face. And mind you, I'm not going to lie. I was looking fresh. Like I got my hair done. I was looking fly. Like, man, we just, I just pulled out the full nine, right? Cause I'm like, man, I'm going to win him back fully. Cause I could tell there was something missing to go to this Christmas party and to have him flaunt in my face, a girl that he was working with that he was basically with, with, and I was, 
I was so hurt. I used that open bar like it was like my own personal like, you know, man, I was I was lit. I went to the bathroom and just lost it. And it hurt because it's like, how can you string somebody along? Either give me a yes or a no. And so after that, what was really damaging from it is number one, my mindset. I, I told myself, I'm going to be the hottest ex-girlfriend you ever had. Horrible mindset. Number two, <laughs> did put me on my fitness oh. kick though. If y'all want to know where it started, it started there, but don't follow those footsteps. Number two, I actually, before I jumped in that fitness mindset, I actually lost 20 pounds. Like naturally, I'm about a buck 50. I went down to like a buck 30 and I've never been that small ever, except obviously like maybe like in middle school, maybe. I've always been a thicker girl. Mm. And I let somebody affect my emotions that much that I lost weight because I didn't, I, I was depressed. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to do anything. But why am I sharing this? It's like, that was really hard for me to get over because I put so much into somebody else and they let me down, they strung me along and it hurt and it hurt really bad. And how do you not carry that into other relationships? Couple things. And then I want Johnny to share. I'm just okay. going to tap into a couple things because he, he'll have one. I'm sure he'll have one. What? Do you have an example? Um, of like how you got hurt in a past relationship. Absolutely. Okay, I'm like, are you? Have you been sitting that. here on the? Have you been sitting here in this conversation? I'm like, no, why no, are you no, looking no, at me like that? Know, like if I answered it correctly, because oh yeah, yeah. Know that I can go on tangents. But for anybody that he can, that I'm like he the can. king of heartbreak. Like okay, well we'll get to your heartbreak and heart actually, you know what? Let's jump into that. Before I jump into some of these things, I want to let's one example, one yeah. example of a heartbreak that you went through that really did a number on you. Um, wow, that many, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, no, it's just it's not it's not necessarily the amount. It's it's the the ones that I went through that mattered. <laughs> and I mean, I've only been through like what, like maybe two kind of relationships, if they were even that. But my first girlfriend, um, I remember very precisely the times where I would hop on the train from San Bernardino to. El Segundo in LA. And that's how, a long way. How far is that? For that's people like, that aren't from California. That's like a two hour bus ride. Or that's a two hour train. No, it was about an hour and a half, give or take. Uh, maybe two hour, I think, train ride at the time. Like, I don't know if things changed, whatever. But it was a, it was a, um, it was an, another hour bus ride. It was almost like three hours just to get there. And so that's here dedication. I am, like never did anything like that. I mean, my mom was very strict and so she was my very first girlfriend. So, so she was like, Hey, shoot, you want to go see her? Like, I mean, I'm not going to drive you, but like you can, <laughs> you can go ahead and take the train. It sounds like but, your mom. <laughs> I mean, she thought it was high, but you know what? It was crazy because, um, I remember, um, soon after our breakup, her birthday was right around the corner. And the hopeless romantic that we were, she was like, you know what? It'd be a blessing to still have you at my birthday party. It was at the beach in Playa del Rey. Um, I forget which, uh, which, I think it was in like um, the more Santa Monica area. I remember I scraped up all the cash that I possibly can to, because I always thought that this was going to be my, this was, <laughs> I think your face. What? You thought it was going to be the one? It's all right. <laughs> no, We've no, all no, been no. there. It's, it's all, your face. No. I got the ring. I'm I, winning. I, I, I rarely like, <laughs> tell scared. the story anyways, but it was, uh, it was, I scraped up all the cash that I could because I didn't really make a whole lot of money. And I remember I thought that that was my opportunity to get her back was going to that birthday party. And but before I did that, I would go take a train from San Bernardino again to um, Santa Monica. Now, that's far. Now, uh, again, I didn't have a whole lot of uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of like experience traveling and doing all this stuff. I was literally relying on my phone. But I make it to Santa Monica, Third Street Promenade. I go to this joint called Pandora, and that's where you have the little like necklaces. Cause our thing was like an infinity sign. Like every time we wanted to express our love for each other, we had like an infinity sign symbol, or whatever. And so I went to the store, literally forked out all the cash that I possibly had, and it was like a hundred and something bucks. So it wasn't even that much. And I was able to get that, and then from Santa Monica go to the, her, her, where her birthday party was, which was in Playa del Rey or something. Anyways, get was. to the, like, and people don't know the seeing, geography of and things. Then seeing, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then going to her birthday I party, him. come to find out the day that was her on her birthday, which is on a Sunday, the buses mm -hmm. shut down after a certain time at a certain place. So I literally had to go from the bus stop where it stopped and tr jog almost like 
two miles just to make it to her birthday party. Come to find out that I'd be spending time with her and doing all this stuff, and we had a great time, kinda. And then at the end, she would be cuddled up with another man, and she would express how it was actually kind of like, kind of like over, over. <laughs> and so it's just kind of like that whole entire journey. It is was, it uh, is it weird that I just want to hold you right now, <laughs> even though no, 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 we're married? No, no, no. At the time, that would have mattered. Like I would have taken yeah, you up. Yeah, but I would. You, of course, <laughs> yeah, like you would have taken time, me up. Yeah. You just got dumped. Of course, you would have taken yeah, me up I on that. Yeah, I got dumped in like the like the most like oh. painful way possible. And so what? What out of like what stood out to you the most? What was the most hurtful thing? It was another guy. You spent all your money. You you put in all that time. Like all what was that love. for you? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I don't know. Multiple like, choice A, B, C, D. Because like when I when I think of people <laughs> Man, when I think of tough. when I think of people that I've dated, it's not the money, it's the time. Because I, yeah. my love language is time, quality time. Because up until Johnny, I mm. I need to key. I know what I'm gonna say. Great, hold it. <laughs> he loves cutting people off. Up until Johnny, like, I dated long distance with, like, everybody. And it was, like, maybe I saw them, like, once or twice a month, like, real talk. And so quality time meant everything to me. And I would literally drive hours and hours and hours to go Mm -hmm. see them. They would never come see me because I'd always make that way. And so it always killed me that nobody would want to show me that I was worth their time. It's like, come on. But anyways, your point? No, what I was going to say, and I'm glad you actually brought that point up, because one of the things that I'm going to say is that one of the painful things about the heartbreak wasn't the money that I spent because I know I'm always gonna somehow make money back. I know it's not necessarily the time because my time was very consumed with the one that I was pursuing. So that to me didn't really pose a threat. It was just more of like an investment gone bad. I don't really regret it. What the most important part to me was the fact that somebody made me feel as though I was enough and then pulled the rug up under me and told me that I wasn't. That was a painful part. And so, I mean, really, at the end of the day, like that's just like first class manipulation. Mm-hmm. And it, and some of you guys might, some people might say, oh no, that's just how young love is. You guys are young, you guys are dumb. Really, at the end of the day, like our life is, facil- is, is filled with choices and critical ones at that, at, at certain points of our life. And when another human being is in the crosshairs of those choices that you make and they can be affected by that, it's crucial that, you know, if you have a heart that you ensure their emotional safety and protection at any given point. Like I would never say like, hey, uh, you know, I, I, I would never implicate malls in something that that I made her feel great and then sweep the rug up under her and say, you know, oh, you know, I was kidding. You know, it's like when you when you get to a dangerous level of playing with people's emotions, you 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 um, it, it just it, it hurts. And so I don't really know what I'm trying to go here. But really, at the end of the day, you asked me what the painful part of the relationship was of, of that ending. The rug pulling. Yeah. It's like somebody made me feel as though I was enough. They you know, they pulled the rug up under me. They said I wasn't. And so after that, it really made me assess. You know, if I'm going to put all my chips in somebody, they, I better have conclusive reason to know that I'm actually the one that they're heavily vested in. Otherwise, letting go of them is actually going to be easy. I'm not attached to any human being. I'm really not. Except? Well, except you, of course. Praise right? God. But, Had to ask. But I just, I'm not. So one of the ways that I was, be able, was, that I was able to heal from that was assessing. Well, I always use like this, like this kind of like um, three-step process, reassess, realign, reapply. But what, one of the things that I did for the most part was understand that I'm not going to invest in anybody that has not made it evident that they're going to invest back into me. That's a great point. Because like you mentioned, and I want to reiterate this point. And that's just is, logical. Yeah, and, and to reiterate the point is like when you understand that they're not 100% for you, letting, go, letting them go should be easy because it doesn't matter what you do say, anything. Like they're just not going to be the one for you. Like that, it's very clear when you find the one, and that's why I mentioned I was a relationship offer because I found a lot of the wrong ones. Not that it was any fault of theirs. I was the common denominator. So I had to peel myself away and be like, okay, I'm the problem. What do I need to fix? Because who I am being right now is not attracting somebody that I want to be with. And so a couple things that really helped me, and I have four different points that I want to make, a couple things that really helped me in order to be able to heal to move on to the next, you can have freedom. 
Because if you don't have freedom and you're not healed and you don't even like you, you don't want to spend time with you. Mm. You can't even look in the mirror without being like, who, who is that person? Like I wrote a post about this the other day, a little tangent here is every morning we look in the mirror to get ready, you know, beard, hair, makeup, mm -hmm. whatever. And we look in it just enough so we can put stuff on, but do we really look into it and actually see the person that is staring back at us? Because if we did, we might be a little shook because it's like, oh, I don't, I don't know that person. I don't like that person. Or maybe you completely love yourself and you're like, oh, I'm doing great. But when you really look, when you really look, you're going to see a lot more than you probably want to. And then when we will step away from the mirror, we would forget who we are, you know, because the world's bombarding us with so many different things from, you know, the Insta model bodies to everybody has the right things to say. So they went from zero to millionaire overnight. Like the internet wants you to see what each wants you to see. So I want to give you these four steps that have really helped me in order for me to be able to find my king, which is always what I wanted to prepare for. So number one is writing down what hurts you. Because when you write that down, the healing starts right there and it's admitting it out loud. So you're writing it down physically. Get off your phone, pen and paper it, go to school, and maybe even share it with close friends, your close inner circle. Because that's where healing can begin. Share it with people who actually have empathy for you. Writing it down, that's the start of healing. Number two, prayer and actually listening to God. So you're not going to God being like, here's my checklist. Help me with this. I need this. Let's do this. da da da, -da. Tie a bow on it, we're out the door. No, sitting down. Here's a principle that I found inside of my John Maxwell Bible. If you guys have never heard of the John Maxwell Bible, it's phenomenal. There's a part in the back where it talks about listening, listening to God. And there's one exercise where you completely fully listen. You have a piece of paper out and you just close your eyes. I turn on soaking music so I can like not have my mind run off to whatever I have to do that day. Soaking music just really helps you focus back in, for me at least, or maybe some smooth jazz or whatever. But you write down any thoughts that comes to mind and really get in touch with the intuition and that voice because that's God. God's not going to yell. He's not going to scream. He's not going to be as loud as the media. He's going to be quiet. He's going to be really, really quiet. And so being able to actually listen and pray, like for real, not asking for things, but praying out of gratitude and wisdom because in that comes love, restoration, and a fresh start. That's where that truly begins is right there. Hmm. Number three, be vulnerable. Be vulnerable with your new partner exactly where you're at. Now, this is probably one of the scariest parts for people because when you just meet somebody, you don't want to be like, Rah, here's all my stuff. But here's what's powerful about that. Just don't just dump it all on them all at one point. They might freak out, but start to drip it on them and really see where their true character is. You know, like... One thing I really love about Johnny is Johnny, Johnny is Johnny. Johnny's the same today as he was when I first met him. Like literally the same open book, same type of guy. And I love that because at the end of the day, like he didn't have to hide. And I'll admit that I hid more things from Johnny than he did from me because I came with this like tough, like I got it all together. And I'm like, ah, eh, skirt, where's the femininity at? So I've had to really dig and comb that out. And it's been a long process, but it's been super rewarding. So being vulnerable in, in who you are, as goofy, as weird, whatever, let them know. And even if you're going through something, being like, hey, like, I want to let you know I'm going through something. This is what I'm working on. Because when you're open and vulnerable with them, it allows them to see a side of you that they can really understand, wow, okay, this person can do that with me. Now you give them permission to do it back. Share with them. Because otherwise, if, you're, if you kind of act all weird because you're hiding something because you're trying to heal, they're going to be like, what, what's going on? This is weird. You have to be vulnerable enough to share. And the worst thing that happens with that, the worst thing is they don't get it. They don't accept it. And then, you know, you know what? You're just not it for me. I need to heal first before I move on to anybody else. That's a fact. You need to heal first before you can move on to anybody else. And then the last thing is be yourself completely. Completely. And this goes in with the vulnerability part because... Yeah, it really just ties in together because at the end of the day, like there's parts of me that I never knew that I could fully be myself because I don't think anybody would accept it. And we've talked about this before. I'm super weird. Like <laughs> I say the weirdest things. I make the weirdest faces. Like I am very strange. Um, I don't know where it comes from, but Johnny half the time is like, what the? F and so I just love that he accepts it because I am a weirdo. Like I'll get off a call. I'll come out here and I'll do like a little dance. And like he's just like, oh. 
okay? Like, who are you? Super but at the end of the day, I don't care because he loves me no matter what. And if he couldn't accept me in my weirdness, that would have been, ooh, I don't know about all that. Like, mm. So you want to be able to be you no matter what. Because so many of us try to pretend to be somebody else or what you think other people want from you rather than being you. And then you'll never feel understood like ever. And that used to be me like wholeheartedly because at the, on the inside, we've talked about this on the inside, I'm such a softy. I use the turtle analogy. <laughs> I have this massive hard turtle share, but on the inside, that soft me, that's me to the core. I'm very empathetic, loving, soft, nurturing. Like you should see me with Johnny's niece. Milana's four months old and like my heart hurts. I cannot wait to have babies, but babies do something to you. I don't know if I'm just at that age, but Lord, Lord help me. Dude, so I want to say this um, is a great point, Chris, like all good points. Thanks, Chris. Fire. Um, and to your question, Hand hug. Matthew, yes, that is um, her happy dance. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out Are you guys hating on my white girl dance? He says, in order to Absolutely. receive true, genuine love, you have to love yourself inside and out. Yup, you have to know what love is before you're able to receive it and notice it. That's your happy dance. My dad says, that's right, you're strange. Dad, come on, leave me alone, you're strange. You know I am what? strange. Uh, Matthew says, cry, cry. You know what, I love the comments. Keep them coming in. This is what makes it lively, people. Like, Join in live in the comments, we wanna hear it. I just gave leeway for my dad to let it rip, so beware for Bob Trotter in the comments. What's super crazy is that I want to say this. I finally I was I was like thinking throughout this whole entire time that we were talking, and I want to make this point. Um, earlier, like this month, no, I think it was last month. I was working on something that helped me clarify a lot of my life definition um, from my purpose, vocation. Things like that. Things that are that zeroed in on who I am and where I'm going and why I want to even go there. Um, I kind of labeled it in four different quadrants. It was kind of like for me, I'm spiritual, right? I'm Christian. So when people talk about the will of God, you that's so vague. Sometimes it it it's really hard to narrow down what that even means. And so that's where I came in. But this is gonna tie into the whole uh, to the aspect of healing from relationships because there's a reason why most people don't heal. And the simple fact is, is that they have no singular purpose outside of being in a relationship longevity wise. They're thinking, if I don't find somebody by 24, I'm going to be old as, <laughs> I'm going to be I old. I would have booted him right off this live if that came out. Please believe. <laughs> I was going to say something. But what I'm saying though is, is that there's a lot of people out here that don't know what it means to live life outside of a relationship or the anticipation of a relationship, which then makes it harder. So in here, I don't even know if you could see that. Bring it forth. Here, I'll hold it. It's kind of far. Yeah, it's a little far. I'll, I'll hold, hold it. it right around here. Good thought. Good thought. Way to utilize Good the thought. kitchen. And so <laughs> I feel like I'm teaching. This is so strange. And so, <laughs> and so thanks, babe. <laughs> no, you don't have to put it in I'm your I'm the face. best easel there ever was. <laughs> Now go for it. You the you the best. You the you the best. Hey. See, he is a tangent talker. He can't. Hey, squirrel, right. get back. <laughs> get back. <laughs> Anyways. All right. So vocation, calling, will, and purpose. Now, the way that I see life is that if you're, she says, it's very hard to hear you both. Oh, man. I hope that's not the case. Um, So hopefully that's not, that's, I should, we should be all right, man. I don't know. This is probably his job to check the audio. Yeah, no, facts. Um, here, you know what? I know exactly what to do. Man, this whole time, this whole time. Maybe if we were more consistent at this, we would get this 100%. <laughs> hello, right. hello. Let us know how you like uh, how the audio is now. I'm glad. What is it? Oh, yeah, yeah there way you go. better. Way better. All right. So sorry. Kathy. I blame up. Matthew and my dad you're for not letting one. us know earlier. But Kathy, appreciate you. All Kathy, right. You're a real one. Moving right. on. So the reason why it's paramount to understand these concepts is because if you're pursuing a relationship and you have absolutely no idea where you're going to go, it's going to be hard to convince somebody to come along the same journey with you. The reason why Molly and I get along so – you don't have to like hold it this whole time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. You just toss that. Um, the reason why it's – actually, oh, I should have put that up. 
Um, the reason why it's critical Breaking to know news. this is because uh, the reason why Molly and I get together so well is because we're both kind of like in the same direction. We're, we, we, but we both had our own, you know, businesses, I guess, if you will, or our own ventures outside of each other. Now we work with each other. And Full we merge. also have a lot of the same challenges. We have a lot of, we share a lot of the same answers, communications, things like that. So we're able to, 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 to sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron. You know, if it, a lot of the relationships that I've seen, especially, you know, recently have been like wood sharpening, like plastic. Wood, yeah. Like it's almost strange. Like iron can only sharpen iron in that instance. And so Molly and I, you know, it's critical because we were both within our own realms, pursuing our own ventures, knowing exactly where we wanted to go. It was only by circumstance and really by God that we've been able to fuse lives together and pursue ultimately the same thing. I was working on on a, a project for, for uh, men of God. She was already doing uh, these lives, uh, encouraging women with not only like within her thing, but then also like within her company too. So she, if we both didn't have our own sense of purpose or guidance to where we were trying to go, it'd be really hard to get each other on the same page in that, in that instance. I, I hope I'm communicating that right. Um, because if I was like a cop or if I was like trying to venture something in like the military or like, like something a little bit more structural, something that was a little bit more mentally and emotionally taxing, like, I feel like this couldn't work. It's not that it can't. It's just more challenging. But at the end of the day, like, when it comes to and just wrapping it wrapping it up and, and bringing it home here, I'm it's like, hour. yeah, we could. That's why it's like you, I seem to start to go off, and I was like, oh, shoot. So at the end of the day, like, bringing it all back in with the four points that I made, and I'm just going to reiterate those, is, is this. Writing your hurt down, that's where the healing mm. begins. Praying and actually listening to God, not sitting there talking with him, but listening for his voice, being vulnerable with your new partner or your current partner, start being vulnerable, set the space, mm. being like, Hey, this is where I'm at. I want to come to you with something that I'm working on and hopefully you can support me. Or if you know they're supportive, being like, Hey, this is what I'm going through. I need your support. And then be yourself completely. And at the end of the day, there's going to be a part of you dying to self, meaning your flesh is not going to want to give up those hurts because it's going to want to latch on. It doesn't want to be the bigger person naturally. Yeah. That's our sinful nature. Yeah. But part of being the bigger person is realizing I'm hurt. And if I bring these hurts into every relationship that I'm in, then you're going to always start back at, you know, not even ground zero. It's going to be like negative five because you're constantly having to go over the same stuff until you sit down and deal with your stuff. And nobody wants to do that, but everybody goes through painful things. So that's where, I, that's where I really wanted to come to you with because it's such a sensitive and vulnerable topic, but there's somebody out there waiting for you, the real you, even the person that maybe you're with right now is waiting for the real, real you to show up and just hasn't seen it. Maybe you showed them, maybe you reverted back because they said something hurtful. Address that hurt. Like when Johnny says something to me that I don't like or I'm hurtful, I'll be mad for a second, but then I have to sit there in my truth filter and I'm like, all right, is this really worth being mad at? Like, is it? Is it not? Most of the times it's not. And even if it is a little bit, I'm like, okay, there's something there. We need to press in and talk about it. And I'm not just going to let this sit there and stew because I know the anger and the resentment that can stew up in me. And that's not of God. That's of the adversary, Satan, the devil, whoever you want, however you want to say his name. So that is what I really wanted to share. It's on my heart because having people reach out asking, being like, Molly, can you help me through this, this, and this? That shows me that what we do here is working and we should be the first to apologize that we need to be more consistent with this. But, you know, that we, we did this show for the very simple fact of we don't know anybody else that's in their 30s and 20s that is talking about stuff like this. And we just hope that it brings light and it brings love and hope in for people because it's out there. And suddenly, instead of you settling for things that aren't worth your time and mm -hmm. that are never going to flourish. Yeah. Like if it's not going to work out in that first year, six months, if you really get to know somebody put all sexual things aside, really get to know them, you're going to figure that out real quick, mm. real quick. And I just want to save you from a lifetime of hurt, possible divorce, or somebody just really damaging who you are as a person indefinitely. Mm. And that's not okay. You know, I've been in some of those relationships. That's not okay. So I 
never wanted to go down that route and I had to become somebody that would never accept that. And so anything else you'd like to say before we wrap um, it up? Yeah. I do want to say this and this is to the uh, this is to the non taken person. Is that single or the person yeah, single person or recently heart broken. Um, is that I think I want to articulate this in the right way. I think after heartbreaks and, and, and just kind of like talking, re-talking on, reiterating on uh, the beginning of the topic is how to get over your past hurts and usher into a new relationship. Old eventually has to die and the new eventually has to rebirth. So if you just got out of a relationship, particularly, particularly if you just got out of a relationship and then maybe you're kind of like in this wondrous kind of like desert land area in your life and you're just like all right what just happened i attached and revolved my whole life around one person and was excited every time they called was waiting for the next date night and was waiting like literally almost anticipating every aspect of your life uh around one person now it just kind of seems like all right now that was stripped what to do now my overall go-to answer and this includes the healing process too is realigning yourself to what you feel like you're intended to do and that could be like 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 the four quadrants right vocation what you think your calling is um purpose actually i think i revised that but it, it's re-grasping of sense of self and understanding okay before i revolve my life around anybody let me see how i can reassess everything in my life figure out where i'm going and see if i can find somebody along the way but the goal isn't to just find somebody along that way it's not just anticipating when you're gonna meet somebody like all right i'm purposeful i'm purposeful i'm purposeful when am i gonna meet somebody it's i'm purposeful and where where else am i going after that maybe is it is it starting some is it am i i have a place of cash flow uh, i'm I, I have a job i have a passion um I, I have something outside of work that i love doing i have community i have friends family and then also a ministry what do i have to do outside of my own interests that are in the benefit of other people. Once you start accumulating all these different aspects in your life, I promise you the healing process is so much greater. If you, and like Hollywood portrays this actually very well. And a lot of these hopeless romantic movies that they create a lot of the times, you'll see somebody that just recently got heartbroken and it was actually to their benefit come to find out that they needed to explore all these areas of their life because that one person was consuming That's them. Good. So it's just like, then they start going on mission trips, then they started traveling, then they started their own business, and then it's just like, yada, 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 right? Like, after, I think after every heartbreak, there should be a, a, a realignment that says, I'm going to readdress who I am. Yeah. Because sometimes people use relationships as an escape mm, from reality. That's good. Because it's easier. That's good. So, um, so yeah, if anything, on top of your advice, I would definitely accumulate all the aspects of your life that help you progress um, towards the bigger vision, whatever that may be. And so whether that's job, ministry, um, passion, community, whatever. So that's, that's all I got. Hope there was enough space in your piggy bank for that two cents. That's all I got. I'm sure there is for plenty of people. We appreciate you guys for all joining we in. We will definitely see you next week. Um, thank you guys for joining in. If you found value here, share it on your story, mm. your timeline. Tag somebody who needs to hear this in the comments. And as always, stay blessed. Matthew, and much love. <laughs> much love, always. He's definitely the ride or die on this. Freaking All right. Bye, guys. Bye.